every single metagame there is usually one deck that stands above the rest as the singular best deck that you can use to climb every one of these decks usually plays out a little bit different some being a little bit more aggressive some being on the control side some being combo oriented but all of these decks have one thing in common which is to win as many games as possible but have you ever asked yourself what deck was the best deck at winning as many games as possible also known as the best deck of all time in hearthstone history well in this video i'm going to show you what was the best deck of all time but before we get there i'm going to showcase two decks that were almost as strong as this one that completely dominated the meta when they were in the game the first deck we're going to look at is undertaker death rattle hunter from curse of nax ramus now if you didn't play hearthstone during this time you may have never heard of this undertaker hunter deck but this deck was arguably the most snowball -y deck in hearthstone history curse of nox ramus brought a lot of really good death rattle minions and one card that benefited a lot from you playing death rattle minions undertaker Undertaker was a one mana one two neutral minion. Whenever you summon a minion with death rattle, gain plus one plus one. As you probably can imagine, if this card was played turn one and you did not have an answer to it, the game was already arguably over. The reason for this was because Undertaker would start growing and snowballing out of control while you continuously put down really strong death rattle minions to seal the game up. Cards like Mad Scientist and Haunted Creeper, Leper Gnome, and Web Spinner all were really efficient death rattle minions that Hunter could use to snowball the game out of control. And even if you dealt with the Undertaker, the amount of damage that the Hunter could do from hand was rather insane. Eaglehorn Bow, Animal Companion, Kill Command were just a few cards in the deck that were able to just completely dominate you from hand even if you were able to clear the board. Even if you put up a big taunt in the way, Hunter had Hunter's Mark. If you had a board clear coming up, they could use Lothev to completely nullify you. This deck literally had everything in its arsenal to be a non-stop winning machine. Not only was it super powerful, but the deck was extremely cheap to craft, so you saw this everywhere on ladder no matter what rank you were. On January 29th, 2015, Undertaker was finally nerfed from getting plus one plus one to only getting plus one attack for each death riddle minion you played. Now, I know what you're thinking, thank God they nerfed this card, but the fact that it took them half a year to actually change this this card was really bad and it probably turned a lot of players off the game and that's one of the main differences from old hearthstone to new hearthstone is the developers had a different philosophy when it came to balancing they wanted people to find the counter rather than fixing something but that's a video for a different time let's continue on to the next best deck oh, Undertaker Hunter was an extremely good deck, but it was nowhere compared to mid-range Karazhan Shaman. Now, if you did not play during One Night in Karazhan, this deck was unstoppable. Not only was this deck extremely explosive from the get-go with Tunnel Trog, Totem Golem, and Spirit Claws, it also didn't let up on the pressure at all. Turn 3, you had Tuskar Totemic. Turn 4, you had Flame Wreath Faceless. Then you had Thing From Below, Thunderbuff, Valiant, Ragnaros, the list goes on and on. But on top of this, even if you lost board, this deck was the master at coming back and swapping tempo due to Maelstrom Portal. The only thing that this deck didn't have was straight up value. And value was not needed because most games would end before value was even considered in the game. This deck was so good that its worst matchup was itself. You don't ever want a deck to be that powerful. Also, did I mention that they didn't nerf a lot of these cards for a very long time because they were still under the old philosophy that you have to find the counter to a deck rather than fixing it but eventually blizzard did decide to nerf the deck starting off with tuscar totemic which was the three mana three two minion for shaman now this card doesn't seem super powerful until you realize the old card used to read battle cry summon any random totem which means you could get a totem golem or a manatee totem or basically any totem that you could possibly have in your deck rather than just one of the four basic totems. The deck was still extremely powerful after this nerf, which meant another nerf was coming a couple months later to spirit claws, which went from one mana up to two mana. Now, this nerf was a little bit more drastic than the previous one because this change meant that shaman had a harder time keeping control of the board while developing their own. 
This means that the Shaman deck was not nearly as strong anymore, but the deck was still so good and it continued being good until they made a couple more nerfs here and there, which meant that this Shaman deck was no longer as oppressive as it used to be. So this deck was going to be the best deck probably of all time until something amazing happened that we have never seen before in Hearthstone. <laughs> Blizzard announced a brand new class to the game, which was Demon Hunter. Since this was a brand new class to the game, which we have never seen before in the history of Hearthstone, it was going to be very interesting how they decide to balance a new class. But looking at the new cards for Demon Hunter, it became pretty evident pretty quickly that Demon Hunter was probably going to be insanely strong, if not broken. And even though it was kind of obvious, I can get the logic behind releasing Demon Hunter like this because from a business standpoint, you would rather have a class be too strong than too weak. And it was going to be very interesting to see how much stronger this was compared to every single class, especially because it was going to be released with another expansion, Ashes of Outlands. As Ashes of Outlands was about to be released, people already have theory crafted what Demon Hunter deck they were going to try out first because obviously it was the new class, but people wanted to see how strong it actually was. And just imagine you're playing Ashes of Outlands day one and they're already thinking about nerfing cards less than two days in the expansion. And we didn't even have to wait for a balance patch. They server side patch changes to the cards because of how strong they were. Aggro Demon Hunter was the most powerful deck we have ever seen in Hearthstone. And there are so many different lists that we can look at for the Demon Hunter day one version, but I want to showcase this one, especially because this one is mind boggling to think about. This one ran Furious Felfin, Sightless Watcher, Maiev, Warglaze of Azanoff before they were nerfed did not even make the cut. The craziest thing about this deck list is that 17 out of these 30 cards ended up getting nerfed. Four of these cards getting nerfed in 24 hours of this expansion. Skull of Gildan went from five mana to six, same as Imprisoned Anton. I Beam went from outcast costing zero to one mana and Eldrachi Warblades durability went from three to two. Now imagine a world where we're still under the old philosophy of Hearthstone balance and they didn't nerf anything. Demon Hunter would literally be the only deck you were allowed to play on standard and on top of that, we wouldn't see changes for months if it was like that. Demon Hunter continued to evolve as well using cards that were nerfed that were extremely good still in different types of Demon Hunter decks to see which one was still the best. And it didn't really matter which one you were playing because Demon Hunter was still dominant for so long until they got so many nerfs that it basically just wasn't the same deck anymore. But anyways, yeah, I think it goes without saying that this Demon Hunter deck or whatever version people were using on day one was easily the best deck we've ever seen and I don't think we're ever going to come near this deck again unless maybe they release another class at the same power level. That's going to be it for me though. Let me know what deck you think was extremely strong in the comments down below and I hope you ended up enjoying and if you did I would appreciate a subscribe and a like and I'll catch you guys in the next one. You look fantastic.